HBO has just come out with a brand new TV show. It's called Vinyl. It is set in the early 1970s. I believe 1973 is the real year that it's set in. And it follows around a, a record label. Uh, they're called American Century. It really focuses on the executive of the record label, the head guy. But it does bring in the other guys here and there. There's other people that are involved, different characters. Um, but it focuses primarily on this guy and pretty much his drug-fueled rampage through the music industry uh, in the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, now, this is a pretty cool show. It is was the first episode, at least, which is about two hours long, was directed by Martin Scorsese, so you get some big directing cred on there. And it actually had Mick Jagger come in as a consultant to make sure it was kind of, it, it, was, it fit for the era of the record labels, and especially during that time. I mean, you think about what was going on in the music industry, especially on the rock and roll side of things. We were coming out of what would be considered like the oldies era and coming into what's considered the, the uh, what classic rock era, where you have groups like Led Zeppelin coming up, hitting the scene and being huge. But then you also have the undercurrent of the punk bands starting to come up and go through, you know, like the Sex Pistols, Iggy and the Stooges, you know, groups like that started coming up. And really this Second executive is rock, maybe. I, I don't know what you would call it. Yeah, well, punk rock, punk rock. But this is really about this executive trying to wade through this music and the changing times where he's got pop artists on his out on his label. But he's also got these littler, grungy rock groups. I mean, at one point, he tries to get Led Zeppelin. Stuff happens with that deal, but I won't get into spoilers. So it, it's just a pretty cool place and time in the music industry, especially in the rock and roll era of the music industry. Because you got to think, rock and roll had only been around for, ooh, I want to say, I mean... 25 years at most you know and, and this is really you know it's hitting the scenes and it's really becoming a big vehicle to move not only not only make money but you know sell things all well it's starting to get to the the phase of hey this is not just the the latest trend that will be here and go away if it's been around mm -hmm. for 25 years this is not no. it's not disco or which by that time, mm -hmm. disco was it not just started. disco, but whatever. Yeah, no, yeah. it just started. Yeah, it Do you know what I mean? It, yeah. it was there. But yeah, and it, it's so that's that's a basic plot of the story. Now, it is really cool. They have a lot of interesting things going on. Like there's this one guy in there who's a big guy with radio. He owns 14 radio stations in 14 major markets, and he's threatening to boycott all of this label's uh, you know, music if something doesn't happen, and this guy's crazy. And it just shows what happens when you mix a lot of drugs with a lot of money. And people go absolutely bananas. That's the easiest way I can put it. So so plot is, it's a pretty cool plot. I really like the setting. I like a lot of the characters. Uh, it's funny, like Ray Romano's in this. He plays a really cool character. There's, there's just a lot of good things going on for the setting of the store. Now, the acting and the directing is top notch. It's really what you'd expect from an HBO show. And yeah, I mean, I, I've used that a couple times, like with Hateful Eight. I said, oh, it's what you'd expect out of a Tarantino movie, which some people might be like, OK, well, that's not really giving a high praise. But I think it is because those groups have some of the, <laughs> there's a reason HBO is is still one of the biggest TV networks. And it's something you, people have to pay a lot extra. And I don't I mean, ten dollars, twelve dollars a month extra to watch. And that was before streaming services. You know, this I was mean, before yeah. we could stream things. People were pretty much paying for a streaming service that told them what they wanted to watch, you know. I mean, I, if, who don't watch TV at all, even pay negative $10 for it. Okay. I do. It actually takes off $10 for me to get HBO. I don't know why. It just, I have a cool deal. <laughs> but anyway. Well, there you go. So, so <laughs> acting, directing, everything looks good. I mean, the characters look like they're seventies. There's a couple times you look at them and you're like, really, what were people thinking in the seventies? But you know, that's just what you think when you look at some of these period pieces. And if you don't think that, then you're probably not looking at a good period piece because uh, yeah, I mean, think about what, just, just look at pictures of yourself from 15 years ago. If you're that old. You know, if you're not that old, then I don't know, 10 years, five years. No, but you'll no look at pictures of yourself from 15 change. years ago. I want I want you to look at that. If you're less than 15, just think about that one. Oh, okay. That made no sense. But thank you for that, Brendan. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, so everything looks well. It's acted well. It's directed well. Everything's top notch with this. Now, getting into my overall score, you're going to be a little surprised. So I'm going to read what I wrote 
for my overall before I tell you what the score is. And it's not going to make much sense, but I'm sorry. Um, so the show is intriguing. It's really cool setting. The acting is good. And I do like the way the plot unfolds. All that being said, it didn't quite click for me. I do want to keep watching to see what happens and to see how these characters develop. There is a really cool underlying backstory uh, with the first artist this executive ever brought in. And there, I, I know there's more to the story. They, they had all these little flashbacks and it kind of feels like he did them wrong um, to get ahead. But it, it just, it didn't quite, they were just, you know, the music didn't quite fit sometimes. And that really, maybe it's because it was all seventies music and they weren't playing like the really big stuff, but a lot of it, I was just like, eh, you know, like there's this one group they show and they're like, oh, yeah, they had a lot of energy and they did all this. And it's just like, yeah, but they suck. Like they weren't even fun to listen to. So I don't know. I, I guess I'm judging it on the music selection and I give it a two and a half. It wow. just it's again, everything was good. It was top notch. Everything. It's just something just didn't it's well quite polished, but mesh. not appealing. Yeah, well, no, it is appealing. Two and a half is not an unappealing score. That's, you know, if I said two, then I would say, you know, I'm probably not going to pick it up again. But I will watch the third episode to see where it's going. They did leave it on a little bit of a cliffhanger. And it could be interesting to see where it goes from here. And again, the characters are cool. There's some really good things that I could see drawing me back into the show. And maybe it's just because it was the first episode. And so it's hard to, to really, you know, judge it on the first episode because they're trying to set so many things up for later on. But... Yeah, two and a half out of five for me. I, I, I will watch the next episode. If it doesn't really snag me, then then I might not be watching vinyl anymore. And just wait for Game of Thrones because that's not very far off. And it's going to be awesome. But hit us up. Let us know what you think. Did you watch vinyl? Did you like it a lot more than me? Or did you hate it a lot more than me? Am I crazy for my synopsis? Or am I on point? Uh, hit me up. Let me know. Comments down below. Of course. At which my face on Twitter. Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways to get on.